I'll check the loft. It's all clear. Spread your arms and drop everything in your hands. Now! You with the raincoat! Drop it! Brother Vince, a little insurance. Got a leak someplace along the line. You're off from out of state. What do you want to do with the meat? We're pouring concrete tomorrow at the Bristol Motel. Yeah. They'll be part of the foundation. I get the car. Hey, I mean to tell you, this stuff is going to be worth a bundle on the streets. Now, is that a score or what, huh? Next time, Frankie, get somebody else to gun for you. Smack's too risky. What are you talking about? You're getting a cut. Cleaner ways to make a dollar. Yeah, sure. Go sell Girl Scout cookies. Oh, knock it off, you guys. You no, know, Frankie, I never liked dope. So what the hell are you all of a sudden? What, you didn't want to do this job, you should have gone to a ball game. There's 20 other guys who could have done the job. Yeah. Most of them got their brains in their ass. What, a nickel and dime ripoff, Jackie? You're telling me about brains? Oh. Hey, let's face it, Frankie. You didn't think of bringing me along. You would have been a lot of... Hey, I don't want to hear it, Vince. <laughs> At least when we rip off hubcaps, we take the cars with them. That's, that's our business. You want to be king of the needle freaks, that's, that's your business. I gave you a hand because you're my friend. Wait a minute. 
You don't think I could have handled this thing alone? Frankie. What? Frankie? Your father. Paulo. His heart. Tell me! Um, Paulo's dead. Oh, no. Yes, gentlemen, you all know that Las Vegas is a neutral city, and we are the guests of Don Vincenzo D'Amalia, who wishes us a pleasant and peaceful visit. It has always been our policy for the National Commission to meet whenever situations arise that demand major decisions based on a sound and impartial judgment. Today, we are called upon to discuss the matter of Don Paolo Regolbuto. God rest his soul. There are three families in the city in question, and each one has its own enterprises. The Regolbuto family is represented by Don Paolo's son, Frank. Vito Regolbono, his consigliere, and the Fago brothers. Don Angelo de Mora represents his own family and is very well known to all of you, as is his brother and consigliere, Mitch de Mora. Thirdly, there is the family of Don Agimio Bernardo. Unfortunately, Jimmy is in prison and cannot be with us. But he is represented by Luigi Orlando, his consigliere. The task before us is to decide the future of the Regalbuto holdings. The matter is now open for general discussion. Vito? Frankie is Don Paolo's only living son. He inherits his father's entire estate. And it seems only reasonable that he should inherit his uh, family's uh, responsibilities as well. It's true. Frank has been active for a couple of years, and personally, I think he has a lot of potential. But right now, he doesn't have the experience the regular Buddha family needs. How do you know? Let me speak with Don Paolo's son. You must think of our group of families as a corporation. Your father would have told you what I'm going to say. Don't reach for what you can't handle. The experience that Frankie lacks, I have. Together we could run an outfit. What I would like to suggest is that the soldiers and the enterprises of the Regalbuto family be divided between the two proven commanders who do exist, Don Angelo de Mora and Don Agimio Bernardo, whom I represent. What about you, Vince? Are you and uh, Tony willing to shift to Don Angelo or Jimmy Bernardo? With no disrespect to anybody. No. But we don't follow Frank either. With the permission of everybody here, we want to be independent. Don Paolo himself agreed to this before he died. So you're not going to back me there, huh? I'm sorry, kid. He's talking to Tony. This is business, Frank. Vince is my brother, and I go with him. It's nothing personal. In 20 years, I've never seen Don Angelo so quiet for so long. Well, these are reasonable men. Their views interest me. 
But you're right, the time has come for me to speak. I will tell you what I think is fair, what I know is fair. One, we divide the Regalbuta family, as Orlando suggested. Half to me and half to Jimmy Bernal. Orlando will look after Jimmy's interests until Jimmy gets back. Two, the Fargo brothers go their own way, but must always be on call to take care of any trouble for Jimmy or me. Three, if the business is important to Don Paolo's son, I won't see him pushed out. Don Paolo and I were like, like, like brothers. I was with him in the hospital the day Frankie was born. I, I have no, no son of my own, no one to follow me. Now, Frank is not ready to become a leader yet, but he will be. When that time comes, he will inherit my organization, everything. That is my word. Gentlemen, that's all I have to say. And then the, uh, the Fargo brothers, that's right. Look, have you called out and pretty tough job. Yeah, like so, Frank. Well, I tell you, I think he has a good plan because. Does Don Angelo's proposal meet with the approval of the Regalbutos? Yes. And the Fargo brothers will go along with it. Orlando? It is settled then. A representative of each family will meet with three members of the commission to work out the details. Don Angelo? Hey, Frank. You saved my neck in there. Ah. Thanks. Come on, come on. There's no such thing as thanks between us, Frank. And you're, you're my son now. Look, when we get back to the city, we got to sit down and talk about, uh, you know, about what you want to do. Drugs are what I know best. Uh, Frank, yeah, look, I did all right in my last ship, and I think I can cut my overhead by about 80%. Frank, you stay away from that sort of thing. It's, uh, it's an ugly business. I've got other things in mind for you, legitimate interests. I've got a deal set up. I'm supposed to be in Italy day after tomorrow. I gave my word. I'll give you a word, okay? But this is the last time, okay? One other thing. Yeah? We got a traitor in our family. They tried to knock over my last shipment. Somebody in the family tipped him off. You sure? Positive. Okay, I'll take care of it. So I notice. Thought we'd celebrate. Well? We got half. Is that all? We got six months to get the rest. Great. Just great. By the time Jimmy Bernardo gets out of jail, nobody will fade him for the time of day. The city will belong to you and me. Only if we move fast. Only if we move carefully. Paul, Louis, always a conservative. When I first met you, all you wanted out of life was a $200 trick. Now it's half the city, and look at you. You're still dressed like a tramp. Jimmy Bernardo likes the way I look. Jimmy's in jail, and I'm still here. Now, we both want the same thing, sweetheart, and I'm your only meal ticket. You bastard! I'm bleeding! You play rough, you get hurt. Ah, oh, Don. Ah, oh, it's good to see you. Come on inside. Angie's waiting for you. Angie? Huh? Oh! oh. Here, play the hand. 
Hey, Mitch, will you take care of the boys? Oh, boys, it's a good fight on television. Thank you for coming. Attilo, we have a problem. Last week, a shipment of uh, very valuable merchandise was delivered to Frank Ricalbuto. Uh, excuse me. These men tried to hijack it. I'm embarrassed to have to bother you with this. I know nothing of this, Angelo. I never thought otherwise. They're Mike Spada's men. Mike Spada is your man. I think you should talk to him. He's my wife's brother. I know. All right. He'll be here tomorrow. What do you want? Tea, please. Tea. One tea, that's it. I'll order later. So, you've been uh, having a good time? Mm-hmm. Thank you for bringing me. I missed you this morning. Meetings, conferences, shop talk, you know how it is. I'm glad things are going so well for you. Well, they were going a little bit rough for a while, but... there are compensations. Such as? Such as you. I want you to come to Italy with me. I don't know. Something might break for me here. All right, stay for a couple days. I don't care. But for me, think about giving up this career, will you? Would you give up your career for me? Excuse me. The uh, man you were expecting has just arrived. Little business deal I got to close up. Shouldn't take long, but think about what I said, huh? We'll talk about it when I get back. Check it out. I swear to you, I don't know anything about it. They were my men, I admit it. I don't deny it. But, but they must have been acting on their own. You've got to believe me. Fifteen years I worked for you. Would I betray you? I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it, I tell you. Somebody tipped you off about the shipment, Spotter. I want his name. Make it easy on yourself. I told you. I told you I don't know. I don't know! I want to 
Let's let him spot her. Spot her. Give me his name. Spot her. What is his name? Beautiful shot. Yeah, not bad. See you in the green, Al. Okay. Hiya, Frankie. How are you, Angie? The trader's name is Mariano Longobardo in the city. Longobardo? He owns a bar in Fletcher Street, right? That's right. He was like an uncle to me. Yeah, the best of men make mistakes. All we can do is try to correct them. Okay, Frankie, I'll take care of it. No, no, no. I'd like to take care of this one myself. This is a personal matter. When do you leave? Well, there's a girl I want to see before I go. I won't see her for about a month. I'll take a later plane. She's, uh, that special to you? She's very special. Oh. Uh, where's she from? I met her in Los Angeles. No, I mean, uh, where are people from? I don't know where her people are from. I mean, who the hell cares? I do. Look, uh, Frank, I know how you feel. I've been through it myself. There was this uh, girl and, uh, well, she wasn't one of our people, and I had responsibilities. One day, you'll take my place. By that time, you'll have children of your own, and your wife should be one of us. I mean, our women, they understand. They don't ask questions. They know that business comes first. You know what I mean? Sure, I know what you mean, Edge. My old man told me the same thing a thousand times. <laughs> well, then you should understand. Okay, sir. Go with God. Hey, do me a favor. Take the early plane. You got a six on, on, a, on a fifth. No, no, no. no. I got a six because I went on the rock. Angela. Okay. Hey, hiya. You got a minute? I got to talk to you. Hey, Luigi, no business today, huh? No, it's not business. It's a favor. <laughs> I think I prefer business. Favors can be very expensive. Well, this one's painless. There's a girl named Ruby Dunn. She's some kind of a singer that Marie knows, and Marie made me promise to ask you if you'd see her. Maybe you could help her. What, am I supposed to be a talent scout? No, but you do have connections with a record company. Look, you see her and you get me off the hook. You know how Marie gets on my back when she wants something. She's a strong woman, but I thought you were the boss. Well, not at home, anyway. <laughs> okay, I'll see you. Come on. Ruby Dunn, is, is that a, a stage name? No. Authentic Chicago Irish. Oh. The South Side. Do you know it? My uncle and his family lived there when I was a kid. I used to visit them every summer. Where did they live? They had a place on... Uh, uh, Kenred. Yeah. Backyard full of fruit trees. My uncle always wanted to move to California and <laughs> grow oranges. I hope he made it. Well, like all of us, he never realized all his dreams. It was the same with my parents, except that they had dreams for me. They wanted you to be a Shirley Temple? <laughs> Not quite. My father wanted me to be a doctor. A doctor? Mm -hmm. And my mother, well, my mother wanted me to be like her. I had my own ideas. Tell me, what are you doing about your dreams? Do you have a, an agent, a manager? I mean, is, uh, is, is somebody looking after you? No, not yet. But I had some tapes made in Los Angeles on my own. Oh, I'd like to hear them. Well, the quality isn't very good. Quality can be bought. Talent can't. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. The contract we discussed has been taken care of. Hmm. But there's some details of yesterday's meeting I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I'll be right with you, huh? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have to go. That's all right. I'll try my luck at roulette. Oh, don't use your own money. You know, the odds uh, favor the house here. No, thank you. I'll pay my own way. Uh, look, uh, send your tapes to my room. I'll listen to them when I can. Would you please? Of course. And thank you very much for having dinner with me. I hate to eat alone. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you very much. Come on. 
upstairs to bed. But it's so dark in there. Well, it's supposed to be dark in there. Come on, come on, I'll take you. Sit down. No, no, I'll, I'll take her. Sit down. Yeah? Come on, boy, I'll take you. Just a little late. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, Rosie. Oh, how about him? Yeah. Want to kiss him? Good night. Mm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hi, Rosie. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, well, then, why don't you just make yourselves comfortable? I'm going to do the dishes. Excuse me. I have to make a phone call. Okay. Where's Tony? He's making a phone call. In there. impression you want to make? Don't worry, she's a nice girl. She won't mind too much. You ignore a beautiful girl like that? Is something the matter with you? Hey, Vince, come on. You and Nella trying to set me up. This isn't Sicily, Vince. This kid's got class, Tony. She's a virgin or I'm Joe DiMaggio. She's just a kid, for Christ's sake. She's old enough. And she likes you, I can tell. Now, listen, Tony. You gotta start thinking seriously. I mean, you and me, we're beginning to move now. A year, maybe two, you might want to get married, have some kids of your own. Goldfish, dentist bills, second mortgage in the house, too, huh? All right, look, don't be such a wise guy. Do me a favor, for Nella's sake, be nice to the girl. Okay, all right. I'll be nice to her, okay? Vince, Tony, Frank wants you. He's waiting outside. Take care. Hey. We just got time to meet Longo Barter. Then I gotta take a plane to Rome. Let's go. Just say when. Well, look, Mariano, I got a problem. I gotta talk to somebody. You got an hour for me? Oh, sure. Maybe we'll go, uh, maybe we'll go over to my place, get away from these pigs, huh? Hey, let me get my coat. See ya. Take care of things, Al. Mariano, my car's right outside. Let me talk to Green. Just oh, here. sure. So, I don't say. Hi, Tony. How are you doing, Vince? Oh. 
so so, Mariana. You know, when I settle down, Vince, get a wife, kids. Day I can get up in the morning knowing I got a 50-50 chance of coming home alive. Oh, come on, relax, will you? We're independent now. Bullshit. As long as we're on the hook to Don Angelo and Orlando, we're still guns. And that's all. That's not my idea of a life, Vince. I want out. Business is doing fine. You got Zappatini and the rest of the guys are okay. You don't need me anymore. I'll always need you, Tony. Anyway, where, where's a kid like you gonna go? Kid? Since I'm almost 30 years old, it's a lot of the world I haven't seen. I have to look around a little. I mean, I don't even know what my choices are. Do what's in your heart, Tony. Thanks, Vince. Done. Mr. DeMora, I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all. As a matter of fact, I was just, uh, listening to your songs. Uh, can I get you something, uh, scotch, uh, a little wine? No, thank you, nothing. Excuse me, I wasn't expecting company. My songs. You didn't like them. I liked them very much. Especially the last one. That's a lovely song. I mean, the feelings are, they're so real. Who wrote it? I wrote it myself. You wrote the lyrics? The music, too. Why, oh, that's wonderful. It must be very satisfying having such a, such a talent. It would be if more people listened. Mm, what you want is success. That doesn't happen overnight. After two years of waiting to be discovered, it's hard to be patient. Yes, I know what you mean. I wanted to be a builder, a contractor, and I, I became impatient. And changed your mind. Well, I had to make a living. But you've chosen a very, uh, very difficult life, my dear young lady. I'll do whatever I can to get it. Oh, you mustn't come to terms so, uh, so easily. I don't have a choice. It's something I have to do. It's a commitment. Then you must keep it. You know, I know this man. He has a record company. I'll ask him to come up from Los Angeles. Can you stay uh, a day or so and uh, talk to him? Of course. Good. It's more than I'd hoped for. <laughs> May I use the powder room? Yes, of course. It's uh, down the hall and to your right. Sweet. 
with the wonder and delight of our last night. If I wanted a woman, all I have to do is pick up the phone. You're under no obligation. As we lie here, quietly watching the dawn appear, I am filled with the wonder. go. I made the deal of a lifetime. You and uh, Vince don't buy into this one, you're out of your minds. Yeah, talk to Vince. I'm out of business. Hey, what are you, kidding me? On my mother's grave. I've had nothing to do with it for weeks. You're out of your mind. Here, you're gonna need this. Guaranteed to bring you seven years good luck. Hey, thanks, Frankie. Hey, look at this. It's for my special girl. Hey, that's nice. Terrific. Arriving passenger, Mr. Frank Regabudo. Please contact the white courtesy booth. Mr. Frank Regabudo. I'm Frank Regabudo. Uh, yes, sir. Just a moment. Here it is. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care of my bags. I'll see you later.
I thought you had some class. If you're still interested in Ruby Dunn, you can find her at 816 Harkman Street, apartment 7D. Her boyfriend keeps her there. Where you get paid by the hour, you get paid by the piece. You are drunk, Frank. You're behaving like a child. I'll make you some coffee. Frank. Frank? Why would he do this? I, I used to date him before. Get Pete Lazari, then go and find Frank. You want him brought to you, Ange? I never want to see him again, alive. Is that clear? Don Angelo. But how didn't she tell me? Because if she had, you probably would have killed her. You got a bad temper on you, Frankie. Listen, you gotta go try and straighten things out with him. Hmm? That might be hard to do, Vito. Look, Mitch, I've made up my mind. Look, Angie, you don't want to start this sort of thing over a woman. Frank is an animal. He's young, he's impulsive, he can be forgiven. Forgiven? Mitch, you go down to the hospital, see what he's done to her. I made a mistake. Some mistake. You want to make a mistake, too? There's only one way to deal with him. Angie, I know that you have very strong feelings about the girl. Well, think of Frank. He did, too. Is your son now? It's family, Angie. Okay, Mitch. Call her off. Call Lazari. Tell me we changed our minds. The hit is off. thing you did. Thanks. Ralph? No answer.
You don't want to. Don Angelo doesn't want to give you anything. Not even what you inherited. All right, what do we do, Louis? Fight. Fight? If you're talking about a war with Don Angelo, forget me. Count me out. There's no other way, Vince. Angelo is after Frank, and if he gets him, it's only a matter of time before he comes after you. Me? That's right. And he's got the guns to do it. And then if he gets you, I'm next in line. It's the only way it figures, Vince. He's right. Okay. What's the deal? First, we need somebody on the inside to keep us posted of what he's doing. I got the right guy for that. I'll take care of it. All right. And then you just sit tight. The next move he makes, we come down hard on him. All right? There'll be enough pieces for all of us. There better be, Louis. How'd it go? It's a beginning. Well, come on. What happened? They're at each other's throats now. All we've got to do is just keep the pressure on. Vince, Mitch Damar and Joe Lucci just pulled up. Yeah, tell them to wait. What do you say, Tom? No. How the hell did you get into this mess? With my head up and my guts where they're supposed to be, that's how. Now, are you going to help me? Jesus. Hey, you know what you've done? You set yourself up against the biggest goddamn outfit in the city. That's what you've done. Look, kid, demora has got to learn that he can't push us around. We don't take a stand here. The guy will flatten us. One more gun's not gonna make the difference. What makes you think you need me? Frankie, do me a favor. Sure. Now listen to me, Tony. I don't kid myself, you understand? There's certain things I'm good at, certain things I'm not. I mean, you put me in the ring, I can handle myself. It's the game plan. I got no head for that. You do. I need your brains. But Vince, it's something I don't want to get involved in. Look, I understand that uh, this operation we got here, it's not what you want. But it's my only shot, Tony. I mean, without it, without you. What am I but a, a small timer, growing older every day? Come on, Vance. Come on. I'm your brother, Tony. Give me a hand. Okay. But the minute you're off the hook, I'm checking out. You're a good kid, Tony. Well, somebody's got to make sure Nell doesn't end up a widow. 
Here you go. Send them in. Thank you. Good morning. Sit down. Take a lot off. We heard that you were here, Frank. You got big ears. Maybe somebody's got a big mouth, Vince. That Angelo wants to talk to you. Maybe it's a good idea for him and you to get together. Sure. Send him around. Talk to him, Vince. Tell him the score. None of my business. Then why is he here? He's a friend. Well, isn't Don Angelo your friend, too? Yeah, sure. That's why we don't want him to do anything more that he'd be sorry about later. Like hitting Vito. It was an accident. Yeah. They happen when you set out to kill people, huh? Like he said, it was accidental. Don Angelo wants to straighten the whole thing out. Won't take long. We can exchange hostages if you're nervous. I'll stay here until Frank comes back. Yeah? What about next week? Next month? Don Angelo is a man of his word. I know that Vito is dead. <sighs> is there anything you want me to tell Don Angelo? Nope. Give him my best, will you, Mitch? What was Frank's attitude? Stubborn. Mitch, if Frank can defy us, we'll set a bad example. Then other people will become defiant. The whole family crumbles. Look, we can't let this thing drag out. With the Fogger brothers out of the way, Frank will come to his senses. Guess you're right, Mitch. Okay. I'll do it clean and fast. across the street. They can't stay in there forever. You guys, thinking you can come into our territory without somebody spots you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Dug in there like moles. We have to get them off guard and draw them out. Mitch, we're going down to the house in Florida for a while. 
What about this stuff with Frank and the Fargo boys? What about it? Well, some people might think that you're running. Mitch, that's what I want them to think. And maybe they'll relax, be more vulnerable if they think I'm pulling back. Huh? Yeah. Have Ralph Negri make the arrangements. Yeah. Oh, Angie. Angie. Yeah. Any message you want me to give to the girl, Ruby? No, just make sure she has the best of everything. says Don Angelo's on the run, headed for his joint in Florida. I'd say he's giving us rope, and if we don't play it right, he'll hang us with it. I've been to his Florida place. I know the layout. You mean you, you want to hit on Don Angelo? In person. He got sick when we hit Miami. Heart attack. He, he was unconscious when we got him there. Where's Lucci? Got in Don Angelo. Angelo's safe, Tony. But you and Vince are up the creek. Take off before you drown in it. Hey, would you shut up? Open the door. That ain't all the bad news, kid. Somebody just blew the hell out of our construction outfit. $70,000 worth. Who did it? What's the difference who lit the fuse? We know where it came from, and my guess is that's just for openers. Did you call the hospital? He's too mean to die. Yeah, look. Now, what's our next move? I'll check with you later. Okay, here's the pitch. Johnny goes with me and Frank. Mitch and Lazzari go with Diego and Chansky. As hostages? Just so your brother doesn't think up any more cute tricks. Kidnapping's a federal rap. You want a dime? You can call the FBI. Johnny, so that you can tell Don Angelo to lay off. Somebody hit our construction yard a couple hours ago. 
something like that happens again, he's going to get Mitch's right arm in the morning mail. He'll listen. He wouldn't want Mitch hurt. Me, I'm a son-in-law. I'm expendable. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. They may be bluffing. No. They're up against the wall, and I know it. Okay. Tell them it's a deal. They don't hurt Mitch. I don't hurt them. When you get home, contact the commission. I want pressure on the Fargos to let Mitch go. Another thing. They want me to think for them. I was thinking, uh, suppose I pretend to go along with them. That's a dangerous position to be in, Johnny. If they find out... When I am, I am because of you, Don Angelo. Tell Tony and Vince she'll go along with their proposal. And tell them that I'm very... very sick, you understand? They want me to work out some kind of a settlement. Spell it out. First, they want you to let Mitch and Lasati go. Second, Listen, they want you... there are three things we want. One, no more attempts to nail Frank. Two, Frank's interests merge with us. Three, tomorrow pays for the damage to our construction company and leaves us alone from now on, okay? Joe Lucci's already agreed to those points. What, are you serious? Joe Lucci's word isn't worth yesterday's garbage. Come on, Frank. We don't make a move because that Angelo himself agrees in front of the commission. What is it? Go ahead. The kid in Florida just called. Don Angelo's dead. We got lucky. I think that calls for a drink, don't you? Yeah. Get the glasses again. Good. We got no reason now to keep Mitch and Lazzotti. Why not? They'll be too busy trying to hold things together to bother with us. That's right, that's right. We let them go. Pete, you're okay. Yep. Mitch, thank God you're safe. I heard about Don Angelo. I need a drink. Come inside. Johnny Tresca. I'm over here at Sam Zudi's place. Look, uh, the word is out. Everybody knows about Don Angelo. God rest his soul. Hey, hang on a minute, will you? Zudi wants to talk to you. Hello, Vince. This is Sam. I got a proposition for you. 
I think we ought to meet. Okay. Yeah. Well, what do you say we meet at Benny's Diner over on uh, Marion Street? Say in about an hour. About an hour. Right. Sam Zudi wants to have a meeting about throwing in with us. You know, he comes under our wing. We got about 40% of the numbers in the city. Let's get it on. Yeah. Hey, where's Tony? What? I got to find Tony. Anybody seen my brother? No. You seen Tony? Yeah. He said something about going over to the south side. Hey, Vince. Keeping the man waiting. Shansky, we got work to do. You too, Fagan. Custard pie and glass of skim milk, please. No skim milk. Oh, tea. Benny's diner. Benny here. One of you guys named Fagan? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah, positive. Where's the job? Over there. Leave it as clean as you find it. What's it got? A gold star from good housekeeping? What do you say, Fagan? In a can. And if I were you, I wouldn't come out till tomorrow. And leave it as clean as you find it. Nobody in there. I don't like the looks of this thing. Keep going. Just sit up, Vinny. Get the hell out of here. Just to lift it? Yeah. The parking lot over to Howard Johnson. Let me get a light. I want to see the engine. Sure. Be my guest. Nature calls.
Where's Vince? Where's Vince? Him and Frank went for a meeting with Zudi. It was a setup. Frank took one look at what happened here and he beat it for Orlando's. Vince bought it, Tony. I guess you don't need us anymore. I'm begging on their knees, we're gonna kick their faces in. Is that clear? Okay. You split up into pairs. You hit them hard and you hit them quick. There you go. Augie. Break the city down into areas. Then work through each section. Everybody makes his first hit at 10 o'clock tonight. Move! Keep circling the block. safe here. There won't be any trouble. <laughs> what about you? Don't worry about me. I'll be all right. <laughs> well, now, I want you to go upstairs and lie down. Okay? Come on, now. Come on. Come on. <laughs> happen that way, Frank. Why didn't you let Vince do it? Why didn't you wait for me? You should have known it was a setup, Frank. You let him walk right into it. You didn't have to. You can't put all the blame on Frank, Tony. You want to take it? I got guys bleeding in the streets, and you sit here safe as a snake on eggs. Look, Tony, these things happen. Sometimes you don't get the breaks. Breaks? 
You walked into a trap. A 10-year-old kid could see six blocks away. Don't talk hey, look, to me about breaks. I don't, I don't think it's so hot about it. I was the one out there getting my ass shot. Yeah, well, if you had any smarts, nobody would have got shot at. Vince would still be alive. That was a decision I had to make. It was your last one, Frankie, because from now on, nobody takes step one without my okay. Oh, shit. I'm telling you, Frankie, you're just a piece of meat in this fight. I got Holy the men, God. I got the guns, and I'm calling the shots. All right, Tom. Okay. We'll do it your way, for now. What do you want me to do? I need cash. War costs money. I haven't got any cash. What happened to the profit on the last shipment of dope? I put it all into the second lot. In fact, I gotta go back to Italy in order to close the deal. You're going tonight. Maybe things would still be the same if I hadn't got that letter about Ruby. Listen, somebody did you a favor. You got rid of a two-time in broad, and you found out what Angelo's really made of? Consider yourself lucky. I've been dumb, Louie. Did everything wrong. I got nothing, no family, nothing. If I had one wish, it'd be that this war would be over when I got back. Uh, by the way, in case something does come up, how can I get in touch with you? Jerry on Anzini, Naples. Oh, yeah. He's a good man. Say hello for me. Cadillac you left with us. Yeah, and you broke the window in the child when you left. Birthday, Mr. Zodi.
Hot enough for you, Johnny? You said fence up, Johnny. No, Tony, I didn't do it. I swear to God, Tony. I didn't do it. Please, Tony, stop. No, no. <laughs> You talk, you'll get the same. Yeah. Yeah, I'll tell him. Who's that? They got Johnny Tresca. Send Orlando in. You know that. And get out. I got no use for you. The commission doesn't like what's going on. They want to talk to you. Talk to talk to Tony Fargo. Tell me. He's just a pawn. Frank calls the shots. Come on, come on. Tony's in charge and you know it. Frank hasn't got what it takes. He pays the bills. You get rid of him and the war's over. I won't do it. You want to stay, my friend? You leave now. She's waiting in the back garden. Do you want to talk to her? From here we walk. Too much traffic. Now the car is waiting in warehouse. If you like, we can eat first. They have delicious calamari at the end of the pier. Now let's uh, let's do the work first, all right? So, like your father, eh? Huh? Eccolo. All that remains is to put the shipment in the tires. Nice. How's the quality? Come, you see for yourself. Frank, I love you almost as a son. But one acquires obligations. That's sooner or later one must pay them. <laughs> what about your obligations to my father? God has taken him. My obligations are to the living, to Luigi Orlando. I have no choice. As a favor, do not go to God with a curse against me on your lips. Per carita.
Thanks. Who was that? Bernardo's lawyer. Jimmy gets out of jail tomorrow. Bastards found some legal technicality in the ruling. I'm supposed to pick him up. Beautiful. Take it slow, you said. And the whole town would belong to us, including Jimmy. You took it slow, all right. And where are we now? Nowhere! The Fargo kid screwed up our plans. I don't care what he did. You tell me what Jimmy's going to do if he learns you've been trying to cut him out. We were in this together. You remember that. Jimmy, you look terrific. Yeah? Maybe you should take a vacation yourself if you think I look so terrific. Hey, Rack. You keeping out of trouble? Yes, sir, Mr. Bernardo. I'll bet you have. <laughs> well, where would you like to go first? Uh, closest place I can get a big, thick steak. First piece of meal I've had since they locked me up. Almost a year. Mm -hmm. A lot of bad news came to me in the past couple of months. I was lucky to hold on to what we had. Mm. Paolo, Angelo, Vince dead, and Frankie too. And Tony on top of the heap. I don't understand how it all could happen. How's Maria? She's the same. Uh -huh. Terrible. Just terrible. But nothing we can't straighten out, huh? With a little luck. Louise, would you lend me a dime? <laughs> I want to make a call. Charge. Got it. We got five minutes. Okay, that's it.
Here we go. It's ready. Set. Now. I'm sorry. He must have taken about 16 slugs. Going? A meeting with Demora and Jimmy Bernardo. Jimmy Bernardo? I thought he was in prison. He got out yesterday. Tony, please don't go. I have to. I call the meeting. I have to say how I feel. I can't take any more dying. Nobody's gonna die, Nella. We're just gonna talk. That's what they said the day they killed Vince. They were just going to talk. Tony, if you won't listen to me as your brother's wife, then listen to me as somebody who loves you. If we can settle this, we have nothing to worry about. And if you can't settle it? I'm doing what I have to do.
Mr. Bernardo. Hello, Ken. Jesus. You're responsible for this. After we talk, you can go with me and look at my brother's grave. The way I heard it, you never cared for the business anyway, so pull in your horns. You'll live to see next week. You've been away, Jimmy. Times have changed. Right now, I'm wondering if I should let you work in this town at all. You got a big mouth, kid. I admire that kind of brass, if you can back it up. I can. We have to find a way to make peace between all of us. I don't care who killed who. I want to know how this whole mess got started. Where do you want to begin? Well, you tell me. Like you say, I've been out of town. Somebody sent Frank a note that his chick was shacking up with Don Angelo. The man who sent the note is responsible for everything that followed. Who's the man? Orlando. Hey, for Christ's sake, Tony, I don't like those kind of jokes. Shut up. How do you figure it? He's the only one who stood the game from it all. You know something, kid? You're smart. Weech. Had a little talk with your wife. Marie is an ambitious broad. What I didn't know was that you got so much ambition. She's got a great memory, that girl. She and I get along just fine. Right. Give back a hand. How'd you know about him? I didn't know about him. It's the only way it figured. He had to come out with half the city. You play a hard game, kid. Suppose I hadn't taken care of him. He would have had an accident. Well, now he's had it. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with this city. You got it backwards, I'm gonna... Jimmy. I'm telling you. We split the city in half, you and me. We both see to it that Don Angelo has whatever he needs, whatever he wants. The war stops as of now. That's not quite what I had in mind, kid. You don't have a choice. What do you say, Ange? We got a deal, Don Antonio. <laughs> 